guys, it's Liddy here, and today I'm going to finally be reviewing the Sculptfun S9 laser. So, let's get started. Alright guys, welcome back to the video. I know a lot of you have been asking for the Sculptfun S9 review, and I finally got the laser in the mail, and I've been working on it for you guys. And wow, is this laser phenomenal. Compared to the S6, this thing is an amazing upgrade, 100% the better laser out of probably most of the lasers I've reviewed. It is really, really great. It cuts super, super deep in few passes and um, at a pretty, pretty fast speed for what you'd expect um, for the deepness that it can cut. Now this thing is really awesome. I've gone over the different thicknesses it can cut in this video for you guys, the engraving, and it even can engrave metal. Now I did get some end stops for this laser. Um, but I'm not going to be putting it in this video. I will talk about it a little bit later in the video. I'll mention that I got some upgrades. But I will make a separate video for you guys about that. Because I want to focus more on this specific laser head. Now, I'm not sure if you can purchase just the laser head and then add it to your machine. Um, if you purchase the S6 laser. But that's what I received. I received a S9 laser head. So I just put it on my S6 machine. It's the same exact machine build area and everything. It's just a different laser head. I'm really excited to show you guys this laser. It is super cool and it's probably the best laser ever. So let's get right on to the review. So this is the Sculpt Fun S9 laser. Now this is very very identical to the S6. This also has some information on the front of it which most of the lasers do and it does say it's 5.5 watts with a 12 volt uh, 3A which is 3 amp max input. Now the fix, it is fixed focused and um, this laser again is super super powerful and can cut phenomenally and really really deep. So that is one plus that it is way better than this S6 that I previously reviewed for you guys. So we're going to attach this to the model here. Now when you do order this machine you do get this model already but this um, model is the one that came with the S6 so I was just sent the new laser and then a couple upgrades that I will show you guys in a second here. So just to attach this on here you're going to use these two screws and then it slides on there so I'm going to attach it and then we can go from there. So once the laser is attached all you have to do is connect the power cord there and power up the machine. Now the best way to focus this machine or this specific laser is to use the provided um, cylinder here that is the specific length away from your material. So if I pull out a piece of material here and I believe this is a quarter inch thick plywood that they do provide with the machine. Um, all you gotta do is place it underneath and then place your cylinder and then loosen up the back two screws until the blue part of the laser rests on top of the cylinder and then just tighten those screws back up. Make sure they're tight so that the laser doesn't slip down during cutting or engraving. So all we have to do now is load our file into uh, Lightburn, is which is what I use to use this laser. If you guys watch my um, Sculptfun S6 review, you know that I use Lightburn. And if you watch any of my other laser reviews, you also know I use Lightburn. It's super easy to use. It's free for, I believe, a month. And then it's just 40 bucks for the whole entire software. So I'm going to pull in just a simple cut file. Okay, so I do have an image or a cut file selected. Now all I'm going to do is power on the laser so I can see where it's at. And I'm just going to move my material until it's right in the corner of the material. So all I have to do is shut the power off. And now again this is a quarter inch material so I'm going to go and cut this material at 300 millimeters per minute with let's say three passes and see how deep it actually cuts. Now remember this laser is supposed to be able to cut all the way up to 12 millimeters deep and so this is just the beginning of testing the depth it can cut. When you do purchase this laser, it does come with a multiple 
um, pieces of material. You do get this light wood here that I believe is about half an inch and then you get two pieces of three millimeter pieces of wood which is what you usually cut with a laser and then two pieces that piece and this piece of um, about a quarter inch material. So now that it is cut we're gonna pull this piece out and as you can see wow this is crazy you can see that it is almost cut all the way through and that's only with three passes that setting is what I usually use to cut three millimeter plywood on the Ortor Laser Master 2 Pro so I think if I added one more pass which would be a total of only four passes that this would cut straight through or even if you added an air assist to this laser I think you could get away with three passes total to be able to cut something this thick so I'm gonna try it one more with just a, maybe a smaller um, shape because we know it can already cut that much again I'm gonna turn the laser on so I can find my position and then I'm just gonna press start with one extra pass now one thing I want to mention is because this laser can cut deeper that means it's going to create more smoke so you definitely want to have the correct ventilation in your work area um, have the vents on, have the fans on and definitely be able to get most of the smoke out of the area because it will get pretty smoky pretty fast. One other thing I want to mention is if you get those grates that you put your cut material on you'll be able to tell when your material cuts through faster because you'll be able to see the smoke come out from underneath of it but if you kind of watch over here if you replay the video you can see smoke coming out from underneath and that's how I know it cut all the way through so this is pretty crazy I don't know if anyone has ever been able to successfully cut a quarter inch plywood and this is pretty dense plywood with a laser diode so this is pretty fantastic and I can already tell that this laser is definitely going to be my favorite so as we can tell this can already cut this quarter inch plywood so I'm gonna go ahead and try cut this um, light wood here I believe it's balsa wood but um, I will put a little notation here if um, that is correct so we're going to have to change the height of the laser again because we did change the thickness of the material. So I'm going to change the height and then start another cut. So the height is set again and I'm actually going to test this cut with the same exact settings of 300 millimeters per minute with four passes. Okay, so it is finished and now we're going to see you can see that it barely almost cut through just need a little bit more as you can see I can push it through but it doesn't cut all the way through I think if we slowed it down or even just added one extra pass just to make sure it cuts through every time it would work great so we're gonna do that one extra pass again and see how well that cuts alright so this again was five passes at 300 millimeters per minute and as you can see here it pops right out and as you can see it's a pretty clean cut from the top now the reason we're getting this burning effect on the bottom here is because the piece of material is resting on a flat surface so what I'm gonna do for the next cut is raise it up a little bit put it on top of something so that when it cuts through it'll fall right through and it won't char the back of the material but again this was five passes at 300 millimeters per minute so the next piece, I'm just going to test this 3 millimeter wood. Now we already know that it can cut it, but I want to see how many passes it will take to cut it. And what I'm going to do to offset it from the ground is I'm just going to add some pieces. And so now it's not sitting flat on the base here. I'm just going to turn the laser on and then move the laser to the position. And I'm going to cut this one with two passes at 300 millimeters per minute. So I just made the mistake of cutting this material and it didn't cut through and the whole reason it didn't cut through is because I didn't reset the distance. So every time you change your material you always have to make sure you reset your distance 
because you will either not cut through or will not engrave correctly. So always remember to change your distance. And just like that, you can see it pops clearly right through. So this took two passes, only two passes, and it usually takes double that on the other laser diode. So this laser is so phenomenal, it can cut just really, really great. So I'm just going to do a quick test for engraving to show you the quality of engraving it can do, but mostly this machine is just amazing for cutting. I also wanted to show you guys a feature on Lightburn that if you watch my other reviews, you know that you can frame where you're going to cut or engrave, but I'm just going to show you what that looks like. So all you do is hold, hold down, so all you do is hold down shift and press frame, and you'll be able to see where it's going to... Um, cut or engrave with the laser on so you'll know exactly where it's going to be. So I'm going to do an engraving of my logo and I'm going to do it at 4,000 millimeters per minute. And keep in mind all of these settings are with 100% power. Now some people may think that 100% power is going to kill your laser but with all of these lasers being upgraded and having um, better software and better motherboards on them they do not die as fast as you usually would think if you buy a cheap fifty dollar one on amazon that one might die right away if you use hundred percent power but with all of these i've always used hundred percent power i used to think they would die fast but i've had them for months now and they just work phenomenal all right so let's check out that engraving and as you can see it was actually pretty pretty deep of an engraving for only being 4,000 millimeters per minute. Um, it's actually pretty dark as well. Now the only thing I see here is a little bit of shifting on the K here and a little bit on the L, but I mainly think that is because this machine isn't actually screwed down to any base. It's just sitting on top. So I would definitely 100% recommend attaching this to a base, a permanent base, because that will prevent it from doing any of these skips. But another reason this could be happening is because of the design. It could be um, coming out like that on the computer as well. But if it is being because it, it shakes a little bit, definitely attach this to the base. So the last thing I wanted to test for you guys is engraving these little pieces of metal here. Now these look like a dog tag um, and I believe that this machine can engrave it. This was sent to me to test that out so I'm going to design something up for my dog and um, put this on there and attempt to engrave it. Okay so I have it hopefully centered in the middle of the piece here and I have changed the depth of the laser to the correct depth and I'm going to try to engrave it at 2000 millimeters per minute with 100% um, power and I'm only doing it this slow because I want to make sure it doesn't shake the machine again because I don't have it um, attached to a base yet uh, but we're just going to see how well that engraving works and see how it comes out. Okay, so the engraving is done. Now I did actually end up doing the engraving three times. Now that was because I wanted to get the darkest engraving possible. So looking here, this is what you get. And if you try to smudge this off, it is not going anywhere. So this is really cool. You can engrave this metal. Now I don't know if this is a specific kind of metal. Um, if I do find out, I will let you guys know. If I don't find out by the time this video goes up, I will definitely talk about it on my Instagram. Now I do see one thing here that this K is a little fuzzy. You can kind of see that. Not sure if that's my fault on settings or if that's just the material. Um, but overall, I think this looks like a really, really cool um, engraving. And it's really awesome because you really usually can't engrave metal with laser diode um, laser. So this is pretty cool. Alright guys, so that is it for this review. I really hope you enjoyed it. I hope I went over everything that you wanted to know about this laser. You might be wondering why can this laser cut so deep compared to a lot of other lasers that can't. Now, the main reason is because the distance that the laser has all depends on how 
thick or deep it can cut. So the deeper a laser cuts, the less focus it gets. So this has a deep or a longer focal point than most lasers. So the farther it cuts down, the less it the less it is focused to the top of the material. And most lasers have a short focus point and this one has a longer one. So that is mainly why this thing can cut so deep. Now, one thing I didn't get to in this review is cutting acrylic and cutting leather. Now, if you can cut acrylic and leather on the Ortor Laser Master 2 or even the, the Sculptfun S6, you can definitely cut it on this machine. Now, I didn't have any extra laying around, so that's why I didn't get to it, but I do know it is 100% possible to cut those materials on this machine, especially if you can cut up to a quarter inch material. Uh, it's really, really awesome and it's really crazy how much thickness this material can cut up to. So I, as you guys can tell, I really like this laser. I 100% recommend it. A lot of you have commented on the S6 review um, if I'd recommend Sculptfun over Ortor. Now that is definitely, there's a lot of difference between each laser. There's pluses and negatives. Um, like the Ortor has a bunch of safety features to it. But this Sculptfun S9 cuts great and like cuts better than I have ever expected any laser dial to ever cut. So for cutting features, I really love this S9. For engraving features, I love the Ortor because it's got those safety features if there's uh, a flame detected or anything. But this video is about the S9 and I 100% recommend it as your first laser. It's great. And I know I did mention in the S6 review that there are no end stops, but again, I will be making a video on adding those to your machine. They do offer that for these machines. So if you guys have any questions on anything on these lasers, you know that I will let you know down below in the comments. I love talking to you guys and I just love testing out these machines. They're super cool and um, super, super interesting on the differences that you can get for different machines. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If, let me know if you need anything and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.